In this example, we're told that we have steam in this large reservoir here with a given pressure and temperature. And it's connected, um, that steam reservoir is connected via a valve to a turbine, which is then further connected into this initially evacuated vessel with a given volume. And we're told that when this valve is opened, the steam rushes through the turbine, we get some work out of it, and then fills this vessel until the pressure equalizes. So if the pressure here is 15 bars, we'll keep getting steam into this vessel until this equals 15 bars. It's the pressure that pushes the steam through this whole system. So when the pressures are the same, uh, there's no more movement of steam. But the temperature in here at the end is 400 degrees C. And we're asked to find how much work we get out of the turbine during this whole process. So when I look at this, I think this is going to be a first law kind of analysis because I'm trying to get the work out of it. And it's also unsteady. So this is a transient process. When I look at it, uh, things are changing with time. Initially, this vessel is empty. And then at the end, it's filled. So things are changing with time. So we can't treat it as being steady state. But in fact, it's, it's changing with time. So let's go ahead and write out the first law. And I'll, I'll write it out in the rate form, but we're going to modify that in just a little bit. So this is the time rate of change of total energy within my control volume is equal to the rate at which energy is put into the control volume via heat transfer minus the rate at which work is done by the control volume on the surroundings plus the rate at which total enthalpy comes into the control volume minus the rate at which total enthalpy leaves the control volume. Remember that this quantity in parentheses, uh, this one and this one, those are sometimes called the total enthalpy. It's just a shortcut way of uh, writing it all out. Okay, so if we're going to apply the first law, we need to apply it to some control volume. So the control volume I'm going to choose is going to be one that surrounds the turbine and the vessel. I guess it'd be better if I followed the, the lines here. Let me clean that up just a little, little bit. OK, so there's my control volume that I'm going to uh, apply it to, the first law to. And one thing I'll, since we're, we're trying to find the total amount of work coming out and not the power. So we're not interested in the power, but we want the total work out. And so really what we're interested in is sort of a before and after. We, we don't really care about the instantaneous rate at which we're generating power. We just want to know the total power. So it's a before and after kind of a situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this entire first law equation and integrate it with respect to time. So it's basically what I'm doing is, is taking this whole equation and integrating it with respect to time. And what will happen is instead of having dE dt, that just becomes a delta total energy in the control volume. Instead of having a Q dot, this will just become the total energy exchange due to heat transfer. Instead of the power, this will be the total work done by the, by the control volume on the surroundings. And to, instead of the rate at which total enthalpy enters, this will be the total amount of total enthalpy that has entered. And then this will be the total amount of total enthalpy that has left the control volume. So that's what that's going to look like when we do the integration in time. So let's go ahead and uh, simplify this. First of all, we're told we can neglect kinetic and potential energy effects, so those terms are going to be zero. So we don't have to worry about those. Uh, I guess another one we can do right away is there's no outlet in this control volume. Everything is coming in, so there is no mass leaving. So that's going to this whole thing is just zero because there's no outlet. Uh, we're also told that the process, the filling process takes place adiabatically, meaning things are well insulated, so there's no heat transfer. So that's zero. And the change in total energy will be equal to the change in internal energy plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy within the control volume. And again, we're neglecting kinetic and potential energy changes. So we'll 
we'll ignore those. So what we'll have in the end is the following. We'll have the change in internal energy within the control volume is equal to minus the work done by the turbine on the surroundings. That's this work coming out right here. Plus, there's only one inlet just coming in there, so I'm going to just write it as mass in times the specific enthalpy coming in. So that's what we have from our first law. Okay, so now at this point we need to figure out, well, so we're trying to solve for the work done by the turbine, so we need to, to figure out some of these other quantities. So let's focus first on, let's say, uh, the specific enthalpy coming in. Okay, so the specific enthalpy coming in is the specific enthalpy of the steam, right? That's what's coming in right here. So we need to find out what that specific enthalpy coming in is. Well, what we can do for that is, since we're given the pressure and temperature, we can go to the property tables for water, it's steam. Um, so actually, in, in particular, it's superheated vapor. Steam is superheated vapor water. And then we can look up the specific enthalpy corresponding to 15 bars and 320 degrees C. So H in, when we look that up, um, let's see what I found when I looked that up. Uh, that came out to be 3,081.9 kilojoules per kilogram. And that's using the superheated vapor table at... 15 bars absolute and 320 degrees C using the particular tables I, I used. Okay, so we have that one. The mass coming in, um, we, we still need to determine. So to find the mass coming in, I'm going to use conservation of mass applied to that same control volume. Okay, so if I write conservation of mass, let me write it in the rate form first. Clean that up. So there's our conservation of mass statement. Again, I'm going to integrate that whole equation with respect to time. And what that'll give me will be the change in mass within the control volume is equal to the mass coming in. Oh, that's not the rate. It's just the mass in. Total mass in minus the total mass out. And again, there is no mass going out, so that's going to be zero. The mass coming in will just be m in, that's what I'm trying to find here in this part. And the change in the mass in the control volume will be the final mass minus the initial mass. It's mass in. Okay, so um, the initial mass in the control volume, that's going to be zero, and the reason for that is because everything's initially evacuated. Right, so, there, so the initial mass is zero, it's initially a vacuum. So that means the final mass and the mass coming in are the same. Now, I can find the final mass because if you look at it, we're given the pressure and temperature inside this vessel at the end as well as its volume. Okay, so I should be able to use the property tables to figure out how much mass is in there. Okay, so if I go to the property tables, so I'll... So the water property tables for the pressure of 15 bar. So this is the final pressure, 15 bar absolute, and the final temperature of 400 degrees C. Right? I can look up in the property tables, and what I'll find is that the specific volume, so this will be a superheated vapor again. It'll be superheated vapor phase. And uh, what you'll find is the specific volume under those conditions is 0 0.2030 cubic meters per kilogram. Okay, so we now know the specific volume. So from that specific volume, and the actual volume, remember the actual volume of that tank is 0 0.6 cubic meters. It's given right here. I should be able to find the final mass, right? So the, the final mass should be the specific, I'm sorry, it should be the volume divided by the specific volume.
And when you do that calculation, you get that the final mass, which is equal to the mass coming in, comes out to be, let's see, 2.96 kilograms. Okay? So hopefully you follow all that. It's just a matter of using the property tables. So we now know what the final mass is and the mass coming in. So, so now we know this term. So we know the mass in, we know the specific enthalpy coming in. The last one that we need to figure out is the change in internal energy in the control volume. And so that will also be um, written as the final internal energy minus the initial internal energy. But again, initially, inside that control volume, the tank is evacuated. So that term is going to be zero. And the final and specific enthalpy, uh, let's see, we're running out of space here. So let me, uh, let me write it down here. The final specific, in, I'm sorry, the final internal energy will be the final mass times the sp specific internal energy in the final state. Okay, so that's going to be that term. Sorry, it's getting a little messy here. Well, we know the final mass. We just calculated that right down here. To get the specific internal energy at the final state, we can again go to the property tables. We know the pressure and temperature there. We use those to find the specific volume, but we can also find the specific internal energy. And so if you do that, it comes out to be 2951.3 kilojoules per kilogram. So the UF, the final internal energy, can then be calculated. I guess I didn't calculate that number, but it, it can be found now, right? So we, so we now know the capital UF. So that means we have everything we need. We have the final internal energy from here with the final mass. We know the mass coming in and the specific enthalpy coming in. So we can then solve for the work. So if you go through all that, you'll get the work done by the turbine. It comes out to be minus, or I'm sorry, it'll be 30, 386 point, let's just call it 387. It's going to be 387 kilojoules. So we're, we're pulling 387 kilojoules out of this turbine during this transient process. Okay. So let's, uh, let's, let's just review this a little bit here. So we know it's a transient process. We said we were going to apply the first law since we're trying to find the work. What I did is I took the rate form of the first law and I just integrated it in time to get this kind of before-after form. Uh, we were told to ignore kinetic and potential energy effects, so we ignored those. There is no outlet, so the mass coming out of the control volume is zero, and it, we're told it's adiabatic, so that term is zero. So we're left with this form of the first law. We found the specific enthalpy coming in using the property tables for the steam reservoir, so that's given right here. Now, it was a superheated vapor, and we used the property tables. We found the mass coming in using conservation of mass. Again, we, we um, started with the rate form, integrated in time to get a before and after form. The initial mass in the control volume is just zero because it's, it's empty. There is no mass going out, so that term is zero. So we found that the final mass in, uh, within the control volume, this, remember, this is the final mass in the control volume. That final mass in the control volume is equal to the mass coming in. That makes sense, right? Uh, the final mass inside here is just going to be whatever mass came into it, so that makes a lot of sense. To find that final mass, what we did is we took the properties in the, con the evacuated container in its final state, which were given, used the property tables for water at that final state to find the specific volume. We used the... the um, vessel's total volume, and then we could find the final mass in the control volume from that. And then, uh, so that gave us that, and then the change in the internal energy in the control volume, again, the internal energy initially is zero because it's evacuated. The final one is just be the final mass times the, the final specific internal energy, which we found from the property tables again. And, uh, and that gives everything we need to find the, the power or the total work coming out. Okay, so 
I think that covers everything, and we'll end the example there.